Welcome back to Thanks for Sharing, our small chapter of podcast recovery. We are your hosts, David O. And Eric V. I don't really like that you just called it a chapter. I'm not really sure it's a chapter, more so, let's say... Last time I said it was like a subset. <sighs> we're still not there, you know? No, I mean, we're not we're there. S- we're not there. Um, we'll keep workshopping. Maybe a spinoff? No, I don't like spinoff. No. Not a fan of spinoffs? No. No? You didn't Name watch... me one good spinoff. You didn't watch Joey? No. <laughs> Nobody watched Joey. <laughs> um, you mean like actual spinoffs? Let me think about this. Okay, uh, Frasier was a decent spinoff. Frasier is a great spinoff. Yeah. Okay. I mean... Not for everybody, but a, a, so, a solid I, spinoff we're talking of about, Cheers. Yeah, if we're talking about the grand... Daria is a good spinoff of Beavis and Butthead. The Simpsons were a spinoff. Ah, uh, sort technically, of. Technically, yeah. Technically, they're a spinoff. Yeah. What was it, the Tracy Ullman show? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And she's still like pissed off that she never got like any sort of credit for that. Um, I mean, I just mentioned it, and you did. We both knew that it was a spinoff of yeah that, and, and then I just followed it up with her bitterness. So, well, I mean, I don't know, Tracy, if you're listening to I'm this, I'm wondering. I'm sorry. I feel like there are other really good spinoff shows. Um, that '80s show, terrible. Well, no, not that shit. But terrible. Like, not technically a spinoff, but sort of is. Is it though, or is it kind of like just like? <sighs> I guess it's trying to like. It's ca- just cash yeah, in on the same yeah. cow. It's like the it's Walking Dead, happening. like you know. Oh god, the Walking Dead. Like needs they to just end. made a third Walking Dead. Oh god, yeah, it's like Fear the Walking Dead. No, and then, well that's the second one. There's a new one now. Jesus fucking Christ! It's, it needs to end. Zombies are done. It's done. The fat is over. I'm glad, like, the vampire thing came and went. Uh, and now uh, zombies. Are, are, like, I love zombies, but it's it's time for them to go back to the uh, cult heap. I think it's clown's time right now. Could you know? be clown's time. Yeah. You know? I think a good witch Two? would be nice. Yeah. There I mean, many... they had they had Coven on, on American Horror Story. Coven was all right. Coven was okay. I don't think it's even... Uh, well, we could get into like American Horror Story and how uh, I think one's the best. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I, I know some one. people are like Die Hard three, but I actually don't think three is even second. I actually really liked Murder House. I know it's kind of controversial. Um, not mm. Murder House. I mean uh, the Hotel. Yeah. Season. Yeah. Murder that House is my favorite. Um, but okay. Yeah. We're we've gone. We have gone way down the rabbit hole <sighs> very rapidly. So so yeah. thanks. Mm-hmm. For sharing is our um, podcast baby. It is our it's our little baby. Yeah, it's our podcast it's, baby. Yeah, it's like our baby Yoda. Yes, it is our baby Yoda. Okay, so you said you wanted I'll to take first. the lead. Yeah, I'm going to go first. So today, I had a doctor's appointment, and mm. I so I've been I've been kind of like alluding to this for a while on the podcast about how. I've been doing this low FODMAP diet um, to kind of like try and help control my symptoms for IBS. Mm -hmm. And earlier this week, I was like, this isn't fucking working. I need to like make a change. So I set up a doctor's appointment. Okay. And, you know, one of the things that apparently in studies that have helped is like SSRIs, like antidepressants yeah. and mood stabilizers. Uh-huh. And I even, th- like I thought about it, my, my gas, my GI doctor a while ago even said like, you might want to consider getting back on that. And I was like, uh, well, I mean, I've been off it now for like a few years and though I'm not, de- you know, depressed. I mean, I, I definitely lack feelings in a certain sense, but I'm not Jesus. sad. <laughs> I'm being truthful and on. It's an honest program, David. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're in the we're in the tree of trust and then so, in the nest of happiness. I mean, there there's a fine balance when you, when you're de- when like you've had a history of depression. And yes. Like how, you know, at this moment in time, I'm content, and that's better than being sad. Yeah. So, 
I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. But when you take antidepressants and all that stuff for so long, sometimes you can get to this point where you don't feel shit. Oh, yeah. Like, and mm -hmm. that's where I was. So I got off antidepressants. Yeah, I didn't like that. And luckily, I am was just like, yeah, I'm not, like, overly happy, but I'm not sad either. So... Well, people who are overly happy are like, I think that's just as much, yeah, maybe we, not we, just as much as a problem. We hate those people, don't we? Right? Well, no, I, I think it's a fucking problem. Like, that's not realistic. Like, and I think that's something like it's taught to kids. Like, you're supposed to be happy all the time. That's not life. Yeah. You're not going to be fucking happy all the time. No. And I, I think aiming for, well, I've, I've said this before, aiming for contentness, I think it's like the right call, but that's yeah. not why I, I brought this up. I got, so I got prescribed antidepressants. And mood stabilizers, again, to mm -hmm. help primarily with my irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I tried it the natural way of, like, with food and with everything else. And this is kind of the point I'm trying to get to, is that... Did it help somewhat? It did, but there's there's times where, I mean, I'm already, I'm pesca vegan, and I'm a, I have a nut allergy, like a tree nut allergy. So I already read ingredients, mm -hmm. re like, I mean, religiously. Yes. Because... I mean, you, you have, have to. to. Yeah. yeah. So going to this diet, yes, there's a lot more shit I have to look up and figure out. Mm -hmm. But there's times where it's like, I didn't eat anything that should have fucked me up, but I'm still fucked up. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, to be like not overly graphic about it, when you're like going five to ten times in a day, it's ooh, rough. Yeah. Uh, I travel a lot. That's real rough. Um, when you're on a tarmac, you're actually not allowed to get out of your chair. Yeah. So if there's a delay, like it can be brutal. Yeah. Um, so the whole point of this and why I'm saying this is that I had to surrender to the idea that despite the fact I didn't want to get back on medication, I had to try something different because I after seven months of doing this and giving this like a real, I mean, that's a real fucking shot. Yeah. That's a solid college. You try. know what I mean? Um, it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And I think the re like, you know, and this is just something from like, not, you know, a drug perspective because I mean, even though I'm, I got on new medication, but it's more of a perspective of like surrendering to something and then turning it over. Mm. And like, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to get back on medication. Yep. But at this point, my life is fucking miserable. Yep. That, you know, one of the reasons I don't go out is because I don't want to fucking worry about, like, yeah. that. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. going over friends' houses and, like, then it's like, oh, man, like, we're playing a game and it's like, I got to pause. I got to pause. I got to pause. Yep. Like, it kind of sucks. So yeah. it's hard to figure out. I don't know. It, it was hard to surrender to that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. This week was the week where I was just like, this fucking blows. Yeah. Like, I got to try something new. And if this doesn't, you know, necessarily do it, then I guess acupuncture is next. Um, and then we'll just, I'll just keep trying things because, you know. And I, I think that's kind of a good, you know, it's, it's not really, we're not talking about drugs, but we're talking about the same, like, program concepts, right? Yeah. Like, Surrendering to the fact that, like, I can't control this and then turning it over to a doctor, a doctor who is a higher power, um, who is going to be able. I mean, I was the one who was like, I need this and I need that. And they're the facilitator. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'd already been on that medication before, so it wasn't like new medication. Yep. And yeah, being like, hey, I am tired of feeling this way. I've accepted that what I'm doing isn't working mm -hmm. and that I need to find a new way. Yep. So taking the, that model of, you know, sick and tired of being sick and tired and putting it to a different aspect of our, my life. Yeah. You that's, know, that's literally applying recovery in every aspect of your life. You literally 12 stepped yourself. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. In a, in a different way. Yes. You absolutely. Know? Like, and not the, re like, and that's kind of like, um, how, I've been kind of saying the past few times where when people, when we talk about like, what's your favorite step, we're 12 and like really is like, are you applying recovery in all of your affairs? Oh yeah. Cause this is like, this isn't, you know, 
drugs and alcohol or compulsive behaviors. This is like a medical issue. Yeah, this is life on life's terms. But I'm applying the principles of recovery to that medical issue. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I hear you. Ah, oh, well, thanks for sharing, Eric. See, it sounds condescending, doesn't it? You know, I, uh... Just you're, see. You're just... welcome. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. You just hit a condescending statement with an even more <laughs> condescending statement. I tried, I, to, I tried to think of what I could say that would fucking, piss you off. Wow. And, uh, oh, it didn't piss me off. It was just like, whoa. Did not expect that. I um, wasn't going to let you just, like, you know, stay up there with that. You know, I had to come back with a little jab. It's bullshit. <laughs> um, where am I at today? Um, hmm. I don't know. Uh, or you can say a topic. You know, you don't have to say where you are. Like, mem- yeah. You know, <sighs> like, last, last time I talked about, um, you know, tearing recovery oh yeah yeah that's true hmm what sort of topic um i'll talk about it like a little bit of like stagnation in recovery oh i think it's a solid topic it is a good topic it, it's a little bit where i am right now um not necessarily recovery like in general, because I, I like, I love being in recovery. That's, that's an amazing thing. And like, I'm grateful to be clean on a day to day basis and be able to, um, um, infuse just, just better living principles into my life so that things are more content, period. Like, I'm not high, I'm not low. Like, everything's pretty quote-unquote normal which is fine but like also i have not had the drive like i did in early recovery to get to a million na meetings a week um i'm making one maybe two sometimes none in a week and that's been going on for probably a good four or five months now since you left your home group since i left my home group yeah and like some people are like the sticklers, like, oh, you don't be homeless. When are, when are you going to get a home group? Ba-da-ba-da. And I'm just like, eh, fall back and mind your own fucking business. Because it's none of your fucking business. My recovery is none of your business at all. And uh, just, a, just a week and a half ago, um, I had a great, like, jeez, how long were we out there? Like five hours. We, uh, Me, my sponsor, my grand sponsor, we... Uh, went over to Herb's house and we all had cigars and we had some like great talk about like recovery and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, and it, like, I'm still in constant contact with my, uh, um, with my sponsor. I'm, I'm doing podcast recovery. So I'm still, uh, giving it away. And, uh, I'm very, still much very active in the recovery community in general, but it's, it's different. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm not quite as active. I'm a, I'm a little bit more passive in recovery, and I've I've felt my recovery move that way in general. Um, just if I just look at a timeline, I, I was like super active, and then as time went on, I became more passive, um, while still being what I consider to be equally participant, participating. Um, I don't know. That that that's that's pretty much all I got. Like it doesn't worry me, but it's it's interesting. Well, I mean, do you want a new home group? Um, I think that's a valid question. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, part of me does. Part of me does. Um, I like the freedom right now because uh, I don't have a lot of schedule freedom because of the job I work at a restaurant. Um, to get to new meetings as much as I would like. Um, and the days I have off, like, um, I don't know, like I had Monday night off and I thought about going to a meeting and I was like, no, I was, no, no, I'm going to stay here and 
watch movies and make dinner with my wife. That's and but that's important. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, exactly. And I was like, that's recovery. Yeah, that's recovery. And like my like Kristen's great. Like anytime like I have the idea or the thought that like oh I'm I'm I think I'm going to go to a meeting tonight. She's like okay. Bye. <laughs> like she understands that like when I need recovery, I need recovery. So she yields to that, and that's amazing. Um, but yeah, balance. Um, I don't know. I, I I could put a couple more beans on the other side of the uh, recovery scales. In in the you know you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. I could uh, I've I've been putting a lot of beans on the on the me side. I could put some beans into uh, fellowship and recovery. And uh, I don't know. Not necessarily twelve step, but just more active role stuff. Yeah. But I feel pretty good besides for still hating my job, but there are prospects lining up. Um and that's looking to be moving in the right direction, which is amazing. Um my wife got a job today, so that's good. Um after being without a job for 5 months. Hmm. Well, she she had two part time jobs, so she so, yeah. yeah yeah like she still worked at Starbucks, and I picked I got her to pick up some hours at my restaurant just for some extra money. So she was still working twenty to thirty hours a week, but now she'll have a full time plus her Starbucks, which is what she likes. Yeah, so that's good. Made a tattoo appointment today. That's good. Nice. Just had a great podcast with a. Uh, a good guy. Sean. Sean. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for letting me share. Thanks for sharing, David. Nice. See, I, I, I sent a preemptive strike there. Thanks for letting me share. What are you going to do with that? Um. Boom. Do you want to do a Twitter question real quick? Sure, let's do a fucking Twitter Just, question. Just uh, to get, you know, I'm starting to get a little backlog here. Okay. Um. Pick a good one. <sighs> Or I'll start playing Chuck Mangione. No, I don't. I don't think you'll do that. Um, don't tempt me, Eric. Because then you'll have to edit. Then I'll have to edit. Uh, how about? Because this has been a topic, and two people, I'll we'll ask this right now, and then we'll ask it again when there's another person here. Okay. And two people have asked this question, <coughs> and it's from Major. So at Major Dog 524. Nice. So how to have sex sober, especially in early recovery. Oh wow. We actually have a few sex questions. So I wanna Really? Yeah, I wanna do one with just you and then have one with like a guest. Preferably the you know, the opposite, the opposite sex, sex because yeah. yeah, we're just dudes. We're just two dicks on microphones so, right yeah, now. I, I don't really know if this gives the full spectrum, but we can give okay. our experience and then we'll do it again on the main pod. So, sex in early recovery. Yeah, I mean we got we got another few minutes. You know, what what are you thinking here? Like uh, okay. how was it, you know? I mean how Um Honestly, like okay, so the first six months I was pretty I, I was abstinent. I did not have sex with anybody. Hmm. And then uh, got into a relationship about six, seven months into recovery. And, um, hmm, the f- it was kind of weird. Yeah, it's L- real Like, weird. it was real fucking weird because, honestly, I could not recall. <laughs> the last time you had sex over? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I lost my virginity when I was 13. 12 or 13 yeah 7th grade so 12 or 13 and I didn't get clean till 25 so I had probably like a good 12 years worth of sex high as fuck or drunk as shit uh, when you're in that state you, 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 things are more kind of like autopilot you, like you, you get uh, um Liquid courage. So you like you, you can hit on anybody, you can do anything, like whatever. And it and if it's sloppy shitty sex, you don't give a fuck anyway. It's um, true. But yeah, like first time having sex 
in recovery, clean with a like a girlfriend was kind of nerve wracking. I was like, wait, like I was because coming into recovery, at least me and still to this day, there's a million thoughts a minute. And it's like, oh, my God, what what if I'm not good? What if it's not good? What if like this or that? And like just a whole bunch of other things like run through your head. So it's more of a mental game. If, yeah. if anything else, like physically not a fucking problem there. Like, but like leading up to it, it was like a, a little psychologically nerve wracking. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all pretty much all I got. So, so I dated this girl for about five years mm -hmm. before I came into recovery and we broke up when I came, like we were broken up kind of beforehand you know what I mean? Like, but we really, we really broke up after I got clean. Um, like we weren't together when I was getting clean, like when I was in treatment, but you know, I mean, we were still kind of like together, but when, when I got out of treatment, I was like, look, this, this isn't going to work. Yeah. Um, but we did have sex and we had sex like one time before. And I remember I, Oh man, it was weird. Um, I'd probably not had sober sex for uh, eight years. Yeah, since uh, yeah, I mean, a long time. And um, even then, I'm not sure if I was sober. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking like there might be like two or three times. Yeah. When I was in like high school, where maybe there just wasn't a time to get high before having sex, and like I wasn't gonna pass the opportunity up, so like you know, I. But it was fucking. First off, you know, it wasn't a new relationship. It was a. That's got to be even weirder. It was a dying relationship. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was. It was. We were pulling the plug. You know what I mean mm -hmm. on the relationship. Yeah. And so you're trying I to get the last ones in. I wasn't physically attracted to her anymore. <laughs> and like, it was, it wasn't, I kind of, I, I didn't like her, but you know. Do I know who this person is? No. Okay. Um, but it was just like, I needed to, I don't know, you know, let I like. You got to bust a nut. Well, she wanted to have sex and I was like, yeah, I yeah. was like, okay. And it was weird. Yeah. And, like, I didn't feel comfortable. Well, having sex against, like, your own, like, emotions is always weird. It's always weird. And, you know, but I also just didn't feel comfortable having sex with, like, being sober. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. And that took a second because, you know... I don't, I used to love having sex, like, all coked out of my mind and Fuck shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yes. like... Yes! I loved coke sex. Like it's yes. weird and it's gross and like in hindsight like and it lasts fucking forever. It lasts a really long time and it can get real weird. Yes. But it's totally fine in the moment. Yeah. And then like you're coming in like and that's what I was used to is like you know, I'm doing dope and coke and like I I don't come. No. You know, so like things are just getting real weird. And now I'm going to like sober sex with like my, my, you know, about to be ex who I wasn't really like keen on having sex with when I was getting high. Yeah. You know, we were on like a, an open break. Yeah. So like we weren't really doing anything then because I didn't, I was doing stuff with like other people. Mm hmm. And I was like, I don't really want to, you know, I don't know. But. Yeah, it's weird, you know? Yeah. And even, it was until I got into a relationship with someone was when it was like, you know, it was okay. Yeah. Um, and there was like, I was like seven months, six or seven months us uh, clean at the time. So, you know, I had a little bit more. Yeah. Like, but I felt like fine. Like, I, and like there was excitement and everything. Of course. It wasn't like. I wasn't second guessing myself at that point. I wasn't like worried about like that sort of stuff. But yeah, that first the first time in early recovery. Yeah. It's just like 
I don't know how I'm feeling about anything. Yeah. And you know, let alone this, let alone this, this is real weird. Yeah. You know, I don't, I ugh. mean, ugh. I don't know how I feel about you or this situation. And like, we're about to fuck. Yeah. Ugh. And he, like, and that happened, that happened in recovery for me with my first girlfriend mm-hmm. who, you know, yeah. Um, like she literally had like broken my heart, but then there was like a, there's like a weird moment, like a little t- moment in time. There's like a month where like it, like we we still have feelings for each other, but like we're broken up, but like we we're still comfortable having sex with each other and spending the night, and it's like r- repeating an old pattern. Yeah, it's codependency. It's codependency for sure, and like. And that, oh God, that was so weird. Cause yeah. like, and I'm having sex with this person that just like two weeks ago, just like broke my heart. And it's like, okay, I, but I, you're in that situation. But I'm in that yeah. situation. And like, part of my brain is like, no, this is going to work out. And, uh, somehow my penis is going to make this help at this moment. And the sex is going to, going to be the catalyst to the, the springboard of the second part of this relationship. And it's like, how am I thinking all of this while I'm like having and it's it's fucking nuts, but, but like also like but the first time I had sex clean with like six seven months clean, that was probably the longest I had gone without having sex in probably a decade. Like I didn't have like six seven month lulls like that. Like I, I, I just didn't. And I'm not trying to like sound like oh I'm, I'm that kind of dude, but. That, that's just the truth. And so, like, I hadn't had sex in seven months, and I was clean, so I had never had sex with a girl clean that I could recall, and I was like, uh, fuck. Like, even, even losing my virginity, we had just, like, fucking smoked out of a fucking, like, uh, a Coke, fucking... A big it, can or yeah, something? Yeah, a Coke can. <laughs> yeah. And, like, we were all high and then had sex. Like, fucking idiot little children. <sighs> and, uh... Yeah, what advice I I can give to anybody else? Try not to overthink it. I, I that's what I think too. It's just I mean, I don't know. I you have yeah. It's don't don't, don't put the pussy on a pedestal. <laughs> don't I mean just don't put sex on a pedestal. Yeah, don't put sex on. Yeah, and, and absolutely. I mean, I'm sorry for any woman God. who's listening to this and just had to hear me say yeah. that. I apologize. Wow. That you was, hear this guy? I just apologize. You hear this guy? I I, I didn't shame. think about it when I said shame. it. Okay. Wait, what was the shade? I was gonna bring that back in. No. Something about a star. Nope. What was that, David? Nothing. I was so But shade anyway. On you. <laughs> For any woman, like any person, any don't person. don't put sex on a pedestal. Like, it's it's not the end of the world. It's well, but that's hard in early recovery. I mean, like, oh, cause, fuck yeah, because like you also, want you have this to new fill a void. Yeah, of, you have like, this new libido that you're like, oh shit, like, like new libido. I had I was I had more of a libido in addiction at like than early recovery. I feel like. <sighs> I was on so much coke. I don't know if I did though. Like, oh yeah, like, dude, like fucking... I just wanted to fuck. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I was on coke all the time. Full disclosure: there were numerous times, like this was a regular occurrence when I was on cocaine, when that I would just get a random, ridiculously hard erection. Coke's a hell of a drug. Like it would just give me like like I would like. Smoke some fucking coke, and then it would just be like, "All right, you're gonna get a fucking raging fucking boner right now." And I'm like, "Fuck!" Huh. That didn't happen to me. Yeah, um, it was weird. Like, that's it, a David thing. It's a like there yeah. had I, I don't know maybe somebody like cut my shit with Viagra or something. I don't know. It's probably gonna be the name of this podcast if I remember. It's a David thing. It's a David thing. A raging <laughs> coke boner. Yeah. Can it be ra- can the title be Raging sure. Coke Boner? <laughs> no, no, we're not we're Damn not going it. down that path anymore. Damn it. Just um again, sometimes you have to sit with like a feeling over Yeah, don't over, r- don't rush into anything. What is it? And most importantly, 
use fucking protection. Jesus fucking Christ. Like, yeah. like especially if, if it's a man or woman in recovery and you're... Oh, yeah, we're all dirty. We're all dirty. You don't know who they... Like, what they've done, who they've shared needles with, who they've been having sex with. There is that. Like, you, like we don't need to bring an- another early recovery baby into the scenario. Use protection. That... Th- th- if that's the number one lesson. There's a lot of sharing needles. Yes. And, Use fucking yeah. protection when you're having sex in recovery. Period. Yeah. I mean, you don't know where people have been. Yeah. And, like, we have all shared, like, I don't know, like... All sorts of shit. Like, straws. You can contract stuff from straws. You can contract, contract from needles. You can contract from unsafe sex. Like, yeah. you know, and we're all coming in after, like, not really giving a fuck about our well-being. Yeah. And then, like, it's like, let's exchange fluids. Yeah. (laughs) And, like, my sponsor always told me when you're looking in the rooms of recovery for your next ex, like, you're fishing in a polluted pond. Just think of of it that way. Yeah. You're fishing in a polluted pond. You don't know what you're going to reel in. And it's it's the same for either sex. So wear protection. uh, Be safe. Try and... Try and not overthink it. And yeah, just uh, keep yourself in a, in a safe, healthy situation for yourself. Be safe. Be safe. So, so uh, I think we're good here. Yeah. You and know, and thanks for the question, guys. Uh, what was his, what was their name? Uh, it was Major. Thank you, Major Major Dog. Um, well, Major's like the the name that's Major Dog uh, Five Twenty Four. Well, Major Dog Five Two Four. Thank you for your question. I hope we answered it and grossed you out. So, guys, if you're still here, you know I'm gonna start talking about this more. Join our home group. Yes. We have a Patreon page now. Join the home group. Um, where you can help support us in creating more content and, you know, look who's whoring themselves out now. Hey. It's usually me. You know, I am just letting people know that we have a Patreon. Absolutely. You know, we will soon be having a blog. Um, We'll be having videos soon. Uh, The website's been redone. So, you know, we're trying to make more content. um, And the more you guys support us, the more content we can create. Yes. So, you know, um, if you want to join the Patreon, just uh, visit our link in the description. And hopefully you guys can be a member of the home group. Yay! Most importantly, everybody, stay safe, stay clean. 